friend's house uh, as that's kind of where I'm living now and also uh, we are moving soon hopefully once this is all over but um, for now this is my kind of office it's not ideal but uh, you know you gotta make do with what you've got at the minute I'm certainly not complaining um, so uh, as you probably judged by the title what I thought we would talk about today is uh, the football league like how it's gonna work and um, what the possible options are for them um, I guess because as you guys all well know um, the football season has been cancelled well it's been suspended shall we say so that's in the UK other countries will vary um, but in the in uh, well England I guess the English Premier League um, and in fact all the football leagues I think apart from the National League which is below the uh, Conference League so fifth tier downwards I believe it's been cancelled um, but uh, upwards on there it's currently in suspension while they decide what to do with it so I thought we'd, we'd chat about the kind of pros and cons and potentially what's going to happen and and all this kind of stuff because I know there's a lot obviously of people with different opinions and when you look at it with a more neutral opinion rather than what's good for your club um, then uh, you know that's kind of gives you a bit more clarity I guess the other thing I will say is that a fair few football clubs have come under fire recently because they have um, been um, uh, using the government's furlough scheme to pay their uh, employees so I think the ones who initially were kind of I think it was Spurs who first did it I think it was Norwich uh, as well Bournemouth I want to say Liverpool um, had done it so essentially what they did was they furloughed their staff which means that as there's no work for the staff they're now on unpaid leave the government then steps in and pays 80% of their wages up to £2,500 uh, per month now there was obviously like outrage at this because Premier League clubs are not short of money uh, realistically and um, you know people are saying well why can't they pay their their staff um, some other football clubs uh, particularly the, the club I support because the palace have come out and said that every staff member will get paid 100% for the duration of the, the, the suspension um, which is really good news and so it's interesting of why can a football club like Crystal Palace which um, have been in the Premier League for a few seasons now but certainly um, are not a rich club why can they pay 100% for their uh, staff but other larger Premier League clubs cannot now I will preface this to say Liverpool have come out and reversed their decision so they are now paying all their staff themselves they said they made a mistake uh, which you know it's a weird one um, not quite sure uh, what the, the mistake was like they just accidentally you know tick a box when they shouldn't have or who knows was it just maybe the massive outcry from everyone saying that this is a disgrace yes yes that was what it was um, yeah I mean I worked this out that um, even if they say have 300 staff which they don't you know but say the football club is 300 staff and all those staff get on average 40 grand a year which they don't because a lot of them are part-time uh, match day workers etc but say for example that's the case that adds up to about a million pounds a month um, that they have to pay wages so for a Premier League club say it's a three month suspension uh, until they start going again that's three million pounds can we honestly say that three million pounds is a lot of money to a Premier League football club it sounds like a lot of money and this is by the way just staff I'm not including players in this um, that's a different argument we'll get on to but I'm talking about staff who you know whether it's the kit man whether it's the ground staff whether it's the catering staff your match day stewards people in the marketing department the PR department wherever um, all those guys you know so say a big club is 300 of them or on average they get paid 40 grand a year which some of them will get paid a lot more some of them a lot less but say on average it works out to about 990,000 a month uh, in wages so about a million pounds a month shall we say for a nice round number three million pounds um, if someone said to Liverpool Spurs you have three million less in your transfer budget next season um, 
would that really make a blind bit of difference to them? No, no, it wouldn't. So I I think it was a really scummy move and a bad, bad PR move personally uh, to do that. Um, and hopefully they'll all reverse their decision and just, just pay their staff 100% because some people have come out in defence of the clubs and said, well, they're not bombless bits of money, blah, blah, blah. But in my opinion, if you can afford to pay X millions of pounds in transfers, you can afford to pay your staff. Like, there's, I know people will argue and say transfers are, you know, sometimes structured over, you know, seasons. Sometimes there's bonus schemes, but there's not many Premier League clubs which will, which would miss three million pounds, um, really, realistically, especially not Spurs and Liverpool. Um, so hopefully they will, um, you know, change their mind and, you know, the government money should go to firms which need the money. If a Premier League club seriously does need the money that badly, they can't pay their staff for, for three months, for example, I would hope the league would step in and uh, firstly ask to see the accounts of that football club because there's something seriously wrong there. Um, it's worrying, very, very worrying, I think, on just a general scheme of things, how many uh, um, companies have come out and said, massive companies, by the way, I'm not talking about small companies because I totally understand that, but massive corporations have come out and said, we need a government bailout, you know, after they've maybe last year just paid, you know, millions and millions in bonuses to executives or shareholders or whatever. It's really super worrying because, you know, these uh, companies are just living almost like week to week. You know, if three months, take for example, um, now I know a lot, there were a lot of companies which are already in prob having problems. Debenhams, for example, in the UK already had massive problems um, and things like that. So I get why they have a lot of rent to pay, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but when I see companies like, say, Virgin uh, Atlantic, and I'm like, how on earth can that company be like, we need a government bailout? It, it kind of doesn't make sense to me in a way. Um, but there you go. Uh, maybe some people are being cheeky with it. I don't know. Um, you know, we'll see. Um, the other side of things, I guess, is the footballer side of stuff. So a lot of people are calling for footballers to take a pay cut for the duration of this, um, especially in the light of teams. You know, how can you pay your, you know, how can you pay Mohamed Salah 100 grand a week when you're saying you can't afford, you know, um, that much, you know, that's 400 grand a month, but you can't afford a million pound for all your 300 other staff. Firstly, uh, you know, Clubs want to keep the players happy because they don't want them to agitate for a move. So I think a lot of them have waited for the players to come out and say, we're going to take a pay cut rather than saying, you're going to take a pay cut. Um, thirdly, yes, the vast majority of Premier League footballers should be able to take, well, should not be paid basically for three months. I mean, the amount of money that a lot of them get, even the, the lowest paid, well, okay, there's an argument to say, of course, like, if, for example, you were getting paid below, I don't know, 10 grand a month, there is an argument to say that maybe you, you might need the money for your mortgage, etc., etc., arguably, I don't know. Um, but a lot of players get a lot of money for their wages, sponsorship deals as well, uh, they get um, a lot of bonuses as well, um, you know, as well as transfer fees when they move clubs. They're not poor. Um, and they're also, you know, there's the, the argument I think some people are getting into is do footballers deserve the money they get? That's a completely different argument in my opinion. Not one I particularly want to have. Um, there's an argument to say that they generate a lot of money, therefore they get paid a lot of money. That's generally how it works. The more money you generate, if you're in an industry which generates a lot of money, you're, you're in it, then you generally will, um, you, you'll make a, a lot of money from that as well. That's a different argument. The argument now is, should footballers take a pay cut because they're not performing? Yes, they're still keeping fit at home, etc. But, like, they're not having to do anything. I seriously doubt any of them have got a contract clause where this happens because it's just so um, unprecedented. 
that word gets used a lot, but it is unprecedented. Um, so, should they take a pay cut? The argument against it is that you know, people are saying if they take a 30% pay cut, then there's a, you know, they could lose 200 million in tax. You know, the, the country as a whole, they pay a high percentage of tax, which you know, it's like, that's fair. I would argue that maybe that 30% pay cut should just get donated to say the NHS or to charities etc directly um, on there and that way they don't miss out um, football clubs can afford to pay footballers uh, for three months like if they can't then again like they need to look at this business model that they've got because it's it's clearly wrong if Crystal Palace can come out which have a ground which holds 26,000 so they make very little off ticket revenue and can come out and say we're going to pay all our players and a lot of Palace players are actually on a lot of money like Will Sars on over 100 grand so has been take here I believe um, and maybe uh, one or two other Sacco I think is a very high earner um, they have a lot of players on, on high money and, and certainly the vast majority are on 40, 50 grand a week so they're paying a lot of money wages for that squad and they can afford it um, so you know and, and they came out very early and said we're going to we're going to pay our all our staff and players 100 percent so yeah i don't know it's yeah, weird um there's obviously always going to be a focus on footballers even though there are some executives out there bankers etc earning more than them there are people in the world who earn more than footballers and you know there are a lot of chief executives business which is just saying i'm not taking any money during this the close down which is fair enough so the argument is why are footballers taking any money um, why not donate their wages straight to um, charities? I don't know the bank account details of every footballer out there, you know, their transactions, whatever. I would imagine most of them could go three months without getting paid and still live a very comfortable life at home and pay their bills, etc. Um, maybe they might not be able to buy a new Lamborghini, but I think they'd live, shall we say. Uh, and I don't think that's being too harsh. So my thing, I'd love them to, if they all came out and just said, you know what, with the Premier League, we're going to donate half our wages to charity, you know, until the lockdown's over, we get playing again. That would be a fantastic PR move, I think. Even 50%, I think would be brilliant. I think anything less than that seems a little bit cheeky. More than that, even better. Um, the staff, like, should get paid by the clubs. That's non-negotiable I think so that's kind of got that bit out of the way with then I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the Premier League and, and what that tells and um, we're going to switch to ooh, camera two I'll have to just put that away and then um, we've got this kind of screen here so I wanted to talk about um, the Premier League and what it's going to do particularly I, you know I can't talk about every league out there but the Premier League is very interesting because it's the one where the most TV money gets involved and that is, I think, what's causing a lot of the problems. So, um, I have, uh, well, let's look at where we left off. So, Liverpool, um, 15 points clear. No, 25 points clear. 368, yeah, 25, sorry. 25 points clear, massive goal difference advantage. You know, 11 games left, no, 9 games left, sorry. What am I talking about? Nine games left to play. Man City had a game in hand, but say it's still 22 if they win that. Uh, basically, Liverpool only had to win, I think, a couple of games if that, and they would guarantee win the league. A lot of people are saying Liverpool should just be awarded the league, and, and that's, that's it, you know, avoid the rest. The problem you have there, so say you have a complete cancellation, Bournemouth go down with Villa and Norwich. Now, you know, nine games left, anything can happen here. You know, you could see Southampton or Newcastle get relegated, potentially, probably up to there. I'd say Everton would be fine, even if they didn't win another game of the season. Um, any of these teams could get relegated. So then Bournemouth set up a, uh, a legal fight against the Premier League, because going down is going to cost them you know, over 100 million. Um, Villa do, Norwich do, you know, then you have the championship, those teams wanted to go up, you have this massive mess that if you just cancel it, and I know maybe Man City fans, Man United fans, whatever, want them to cancel 
cancel or, or turn around and say the league finishes now, you know, whatever, because they don't want Liverpool to be, or you know, they they want to cancel the league and start again as we are next season, um, because then Liverpool won't be awarded the league. But realistically, they can't do that. The Premier League cannot do that. Um, I've got these, uh, you know, options here um, that you know, just shutting it down now and starting again in August with a new season is just not going to happen, in my opinion. It cannot happen. Um, They've moved the Euros, which were going to be happening in the summer. Um, and they're now going to be next year. Uh, so that's not going to be a problem for anybody. Um, so in my opinion, they have to finish the league. The other reason why, if they just turn around and finish it now and say, OK, everybody gets awarded wherever they are. Liverpool get awarded the league. Well, Liverpool fans you might be happy but in years to come when there's a little asterisk next to Liverpool saying well only 29 games were paid um, you know and all the Man City fans saying well mathematically we could have still won the league no matter where it is do you want that argument you know every week down the pub or whatever or however it is do you want that asterisk or do you want to be like we played 38 games in the season we were the best team in the league we won the league that I think is a lot more realistic uh, and, and a lot better for every team involved. You know, I think Crystal Palace, and I'm a fan of Crystal Palace, are going to be fine at 39 points. Yeah, I could argue and say we might be able to get sixth with four points off it. That's not bad. I don't think we would. I think Arsenal, Spurs, Wolves, and Sheffield United would be a lot better place, but there's an argument there to say that we could. So I don't particularly want to see the, the season voided, but 11th is fine for us as well. Um, but you know these cups going down like how horrible is that you know Bournemouth, Villa, Norwich could he could, could get out of it with a few wins there um, so I don't think that's an option to end the season now or cancel it so I think we have two options we play it behind closed doors so um, we play the games the remaining games nine games or ten games of the season whatever it is, um, behind closed doors, either at training grounds or at a neutral venue somewhere. Uh, maybe you get all the teams to fly out. And here's the thing. If you turn around and go, okay, we play the games behind closed doors at the stadium or at the training grounds, you may have an issue where fans congregate around and um, you know, you're then you're having the problem where if you saw the PSG match against Dortmund, uh, behind closed doors, fans just crowded around the stadium outside. It was ridiculous. Um, so I think what you could do is fly all the players out to a deserted island somewhere. Well, not deserted, but you know, like a very secure remote location with a a, a small stadium or, or pitches there. Play at a tournament, you know, there. Um, I'm thinking maybe somewhere like Trinidad and Tobago, something like that. Um, you know, you have the hotels or whatever the resorts for the players, you put them up there, you have that there, uh, or you could even do it somewhere, you know, remote, it, you know, somewhere differently, but somewhere where you're not going to get floods of people flocking around and televise all the games, we can all watch the matches, uh, they're behind closed doors, and we, we they just play maybe like every, you know, every three days or something like that until they finish, um, you know, it's not going to be ideal. And yeah, people are still going to complain about certain things, but that's the option, I think, if we cannot resume football before, uh, say, June. Um, I think if we can resume it, even up to the beginning of July, they can finish the season. Yes, no one wants to play nine, ten games in a month, um, or a month and a half, or whatever, but it's not like players are going to need an off-season, is it? Because they won't have played for three months, essentially, so they'd have a longer break than if they just, um, you know, if it was a normal season. So I think uh, that is an option for people there, hopefully. Uh, the other option is they just wait until we can get back to normal 
30, 40 million from each club, um, potentially, which is, that's a lot of money. Um, and uh, I don't think that's that's an option for them not to finish the season now. I think that, that European competitions won't get finished. I think they will be cancelled. And I think that the, the countries will focus on the domestic league. I think behind closed doors is the most likely option. I think they'll probably do it in this country and I hope people won't be sensible enough not to congregate, to stay at home, watch it on TV, you know, have that option um, and, uh, you know, enjoy it from there. And it's not going to be ideal, you know. I know all the Liverpool fans will want to be in that stadium or outside having a party, you know, when they win the league um, and they'll, they'll want to do that. But if we can't get the football matches going before June, which it's a couple of months away, and we don't know what's going on. Like we've seen today, China have announced they had no new deaths reported. What China is reporting and what is actually happening, we don't know. We're beginning to see Italy and Spain have a slight downturn in their peaks. Um, but we don't, at the minute, have any exit strategy out of this lockdown in the UK uh, currently. Uh, and while we have seen a small downturn, they have said that don't necessarily look at too much into that because um, yeah, the figures from the weekend often get pushed into the week so it's a little bit off but fingers crossed you know we get everything reopened by by June July and we get back to, to watching football um, on a slightly weirder subject I know the in the UFC they apparently are hiring a private island and they're gonna have a, you know a do a um you know some a tournament there you know uh, a pay-per-view there which i think in these times people do need a bit of sport where we can do it um that's the, the th problem though because i think the private island thing's ideal because you're not going to get fans congregating around there they'll stay at home watch it on tv um you know for me the the problem with playing games behind closed doors is fans will be stupid enough to try and go to the you know, outside the stadium or, or do whatever um, and uh, you know we've seen that already in other countries and, and, and stuff like that so I just don't think it's an option people are not trustworthy enough uh, to, to not do that so um, yeah hopefully fingers crossed the, f the season gets finished because I would hate for there to be asterisks next to everybody's name uh, and you know have that happen we'll see repercussions on this i'm sure you know the other problem actually i have kind of spoken about is, is players contracts like a lot of player contracts will, will end in june like the end of june usually um and then you know they're not contracted to play for their team so if you're running a tournament still june july you, you potentially have an issue where players won't want to play because they're like well i'm out of contract and yes you could have a rolling contract but they might be like well i've agreed to join this club and yeah as a result i don't want to get injured you know playing for you in your last few games which might mean nothing if you're a palace fan or a burnley fan or whatever um so yeah there's there's an issue there i guess um and I mean, don't think that players aren't now in this off time. Agents aren't potentially talking about moves for the next season. They are. So, say Jack Grealish is at Aston Villa now. You know, where if the league was normally running, I don't think he would have thought about anything until the season was over. But now, I'm sure his agent is out there talking to clubs, you know, on the, it, on the basis of Jack Grealish, actually, I will say, uh, the guy's an idiot for breaking the... Um, lockdown and going to see a mate however he's not as much of an idiot as Kyle Walker is who takes the, just the biggest idiot prize ever for hosting a sex party um, at his house with two escorts and a mate just unbelievably stupid uh, honestly uh, if, if I was Mad City right now I would have sacked him in all honesty Pep Guardiola's mum died of coronavirus you know uh, recently and, and like condolences go out to him uh, that is very sad one of his players broke curfew for to hook up with some hookers like, it's just unbelievable I if I was Pep Cardio I'd be like I don't want this guy on my team get him out like go don't stop paying him sack him tear up that contract 
um, because listen, it's not, uh, you know, in years to come, that may not be seen as the worst crime in the world, but right now, like, that's disgraceful, um, utterly disgraceful, just unbelievably dumb, um, any of them, and listen, people are dumb, people do think they're invincible or don't care about the consequences, whatever, it's not just footballers, there's a lot of people out there, but my god, man, if you're, it, it, it's just beggar's belief, doesn't it, really, um, what's going on there, so, yeah, my, my preference, I think, would be for them to maybe do it behind closed doors in another country, um, potentially, I don't know where that isn't being affected, but, uh, who knows, um, Obviously, they'd have to test every single person before they went and, and did everything, which you could say is a waste of resources when there aren't enough tests around, which, yeah, you know, because you'd be testing thousands, potentially, in terms of, you know, if you're going to take out coaches and managers and, and cameramen and all this type of stuff. Uh, so maybe having it in this country is, is better, but maybe, oh, I don't know, it's a tough one, you know, either do it somewhere at a, a neutral venue, like a couple of crowns, so... Yeah, I don't know where, but the problem is most grounds are city centres and it's hard to lock them down um, and stop fans from going to them, but yeah, we'll see, um, we'll see what they do. It's not an easy decision, I think. The Premier League has not really handled anything well over this lockdown in any way, shape or form. Uh, they usually don't, like they are pretty much motivated by money, but in their defence, that is pushed by the teams. The teams want to make as much money as possible. Um, and so they pressure the Premier League, like a lot of times teams vote and stuff, and the Premier League just has to, you know, do what they want to do, so it's not an easy thing to do, but they've, they've kind of acted quite badly, I think, over there, but I'm interested to know what your thoughts are, um, obviously there was a lot of bias involved, but if you look past that, I generally think what is best for football, um, you know, and how best can serve the public it's taken a lot of money from the public over the years it would be nice if it now thinks about what it can give back to the public i know that a lot of clubs have been amazing and they've done things like given away their match meals or you know staff have, have volunteered stewards and things like that to help out supermarkets or uh you know i know some clubs are still kind of making meals on match days what would be match days or whatever with their teams and giving them out to homeless shelters etc so there is a lot of positive out there but they have monumentally fucked up a few clubs on a lot of stuff and that is what will make headlines so it's sad to see but hopefully it will get sorted and uh, we can be more positive but yeah I think that will uh, kind of bring us up for today uh, we'll go back to that as we are hopefully you guys enjoyed this little whispered video um, hopefully you guys are staying safe as well and sound and not getting too bored um, I've got videos every day coming um, I'm always open to suggestions and hopefully I would like to at some point maybe do a stream or two uh, maybe once a week uh, for a few hours and kind of see how that goes um, whether that be on Twitch or on YouTube I don't, I don't really know how that will work yet it's something I'm thinking about but yeah um, and I like this Logitech uh, webcam app as well. I have used it for ages, but I think it's pretty good actually. Uh, I'm using a C920, uh, which I've had for years, and um, it's actually done quite a good job, I think. And the app's been quite good to use and record, so thumbs up Logitech. I know at the minute you cannot, for the life of you, get um, a webcam. <laughs> like They're really scarce because a lot of people need them for home offices. Also microphones. Uh, I use a, um, a Blue Yeti Pro. I've got the arm. I do have a pop filter as well, which I took off for this because uh, it you know, will obscure my face almost. You know, uh, I have to kind of peer over it when I record anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully you guys do well and um, you know stay safe. That's the most important thing, and everyone will get through this together. So don't worry. And uh, I'll see you. Um, next week.